Greetings, everyone. This is Rivanna Hipsnap with SeavillePaddlers.com podcast, and I'm here today with Merrill Bishop, race coordinator for the annual Rivanna River Regatta Canoe and Kayak Races. How are you today, Merrill? Well, pretty good. I'm looking forward to getting in the river. Excellent. Well, that uh, gets us right into the, the point of the interview here today, I guess, is what exactly are these races, and uh, what are you doing on the local river here? Well, the Ravana River goes around Charlottesville, starting at the north side of town and uh, passes by the east side of town. And when you drive over the Norfolk uh, or the uh, 29 North Bridge, it looks like a pretty docile river. When you uh, drive over the bridge at uh, I-64 south of town, it also looks pretty docile. But in between is a whole lot of fun rapids to shoot. So we decided, and uh, started back in 99, I took a couple of county parks officials and uh, John Holden, Blue Ridge Mountain Sports, and we uh, did the course and uh, marked it on a map. We found out there were 11 sets of rapids in there and that uh, it took a little bit of skill. So the, the course that uh, we have for the race on May 10 is a 6.2 mile course and it begins at the 29 North Bridge right below Doubletree and uh, goes all the way down to Darden Powell. Now this uh, course is a fairly simple course for skilled persons, but it would be a real challenge for those who are just starting. Now, uh, the categories, we have kayak single, kayak tandem, we have canoe single, canoe tandem. We've also had uh, families uh, go in uh, canoes, and uh, we also have categories for different lengths of kayaks, since a longer kayak is usually faster than some of the short tubby ones, so we have a separate category for the short uh, tubby uh, kayaks. So, th so this is a race that it's broken down into divisions. And uh, in case the listeners aren't exactly clear where we are, we're in Charlottesville, Virginia. So he's referring to the Rivanna River that runs through Charlottesville, Virginia. Um, so you have these different people and different types of crafts, I guess, kayaks and canoes racing down the river. Who? Who are these people? Who paddles in this event? Well, we've had uh, uh, relatively novice uh, paddlers as well as we've had some very skilled ones. You see, the weekend before, which is May 3, the uh, uh, downriver race on the Thai River uh, really takes skilled people. Uh, many of those are class twos and class threes, right, David? Yeah, yeah. You, you've shot that a few times. Yep. And that takes a pretty skilled operator. But the, the one we have here on the Ravana, a low-skilled uh, person can do it. But we highly encourage that they do a, uh, a practice run. So we are going to open up that put-in on uh, the afternoon of uh, May 2 and leave the gates open to that area. I'll explain that later. Uh, until Sunday night, the uh, 4th of May. So this is going to give people a number of times, a number of hours that they can go paddle from the put-in at 29 North down to uh, Darden Town. Now a leisure trip is about two, two and a half hours, but most of the race times are less than an hour. Matter of fact, uh, Dave uh, uh, won it last year in a record 46 minutes and 29 seconds, and uh, that was because the river was quite high and it was really fast moving. Now to show you a little bit about the competition, the year before there was 20 seconds between first and second place in the long kayak race, which had the best time. So it, it was one of those things where they uh, were paddling back and forth all during the whole trip. So it yeah. sounds like you have some pretty skilled paddlers. There are some very skilled paddlers, but on their side of the coin, if you're not very skilled and you uh, come up on some of these uh, rapids that you're not sure of, well, pull over to the side, get out, walk around, take a look at it, and see if you can figure the uh, right course. So I, I would encourage uh, that if there's families that want to take their kids along, Make sure everybody's got a life preserver on and go ahead and paddle away. And the biggest share of the river is flat and level, but there are these 11 sets of rapids. And in the rapids, you gotta pay attention to what you're doing. And uh, uh, I, I just put a bit of warning here. If it is tippy canoe, don't worry about it because the river is only about waist deep most of the time. So if you tip your canoe over, you just pull it over the side, pour the water out and get back in. Okay, very good. And it, it, I can attest to the fact that the river is, is mostly novice level, but there are some interesting features in there uh, that they do require some skill to maneuver, especially there's a set of rapids underneath the, uh, the railroad bridge. Um, it, depending on the water level, actually, I think it's 
actually more challenging when the when the water is low. Right. But in any case, it, it does take some level of skill. But uh, I well, think last that, that's spring. Why, that's why we encourage the people to come out the week before and uh, do a pilot run so they learn which side of the rapid to be on uh, when they're going down. Because there's some, if you go down the right side, you're in good shape. If you go down the left side, why, you're scraping bottom. Right. So anyway, uh, I know people have asked, you know, they, they'll contact us and ask if they're, if they're able to, if we think they can handle the river okay and just I guess as a disclaimer there's no way that we can we can tell anybody whether they're suitable to be paddling on this river it's up to the individual paddler to d decide what their skill level is um, familiarize themselves with the river as Merrill mentioned the, the weekend before it'll be runnable um, so people can get some experience and then they, they need to judge for themselves whether they can handle it uh, there are some several online places where you can go and they grade the river and describe it, um, but it's up to the individual paddler to, to take on, you know, the level of water they're comfortable with. And to put it in perspective, I, last spring I took my nine-year-old daughter out there and she did her first solo down this section of river, and uh, obviously I would not let her do that without me close by, but she had, she had no problems at uh, low-ish type water levels. So. Uh, you know, I think anybody with, with minimal skills and minimal safety training and some experience on the river can handle this without a problem. It should be a real thrill for the uh, teenagers because this is not like an amusement park where your little boat is hooked onto a, a, a pilot train you know, that get, leads you through. This is up to you, you know. It, it's up to the paddler to uh, make it safely through. Now, um, I might have passed along there that uh, we do have an entrance fee of uh, ten dollars a boat, and that helps us uh, um, write write off the uh, insurance. And we also will have a, uh, a liability disclaimer form that the uh, parents will have to sign uh, for the kids. Okay. So, are there any pr prizes or awards, or do people do this just for bragging rights? Well, uh, a lot of it is bragging rights, but the other side of the coin is we have Olympic type medals that we give in the uh, different categories, which I'll get into in a minute. Uh, as well as we have a hundred dollar first prize for the best time and uh, that uh, gets some people's attention on that thing now as far as the medals why we have a first first and second and third place uh, uh, Olympic type medals that are awarded at Dardentau Park uh, once all the uh, paddlers or the biggest share of the paddlers uh, get in so uh, the race actually starts at 10 a.m. and uh, it only takes about an hour or less to get down uh, therefore, um, if you want to see what's going on, better be down at Dardentau Park at the riverfront by about 10.30 in the morning because they'll be crossing the line in about 20 minutes. Of course, this will give you time to, to park and uh, come on down to the finish line. Now, I think I need to go back in to where we start because uh, the 29 North put-in that we call it is not that well marked. We will have a big banner up on a tree so you can see it. So that's that's the spot as you're coming into town from Route 29 from say Washington D.C. There's a there's a bridge that you cross over to get into at, well Charlottesville and you see sort of the the main business area. Is that is that the bridge we're talking about? No, I, I think what you need to watch for is just before the bridge over the South Fork, and it's just below a bluff where the DoubleTree Hotel is. Anyway, the stoplight there uh, says uh, Polo Ground Road uh, to the east and Rio Mill Road to the west. Well, at that stoplight, you would turn right or west and go about two car lengths, and there is a gate into a big vacant field. Now, we have uh, permission to open that gate just a few days each year to uh, let people come in and park, and the uh, put-in is right below that. Uh, so you can park and pick up your boat and take it down to a uh, wood pier that is at water level, and uh, you can uh, uh, put your boat in. Now the reason we have to keep it locked up is part of it is private land, and if we didn't keep it locked up, well, there would always be a bunch of people who have uh, junk to dispose of who would be piling it uh, in this guy's field. So that's why we have to keep it locked up. Anyway, it's a great place to put in, and you have about, oh, a mile or two of very easy paddling before you even start to begin to get into some of the mild uh, rapids. Okay, so the race is start at 10 a.m. on May 10th? The, Do we, I have that the, right? the first heat goes out at 10 a.m., but we have registration at 8. Now, the reason for that is many people will register, and then they will drive a car down to Darden Tau Park so they can get back 
you know, in time to start the race. To run shuttle. Yeah, okay, to I shuttle back and forth. So that many of them will carpool and uh, bring one car back up from Dardentau and leave the rest of their vehicles down at Dardentau so that when they get done, why, uh, they can pull their boat out of the water and load up. So it's conceivably spectators could go and watch the start at the starting line and still drive to Dardentown uh, oh, yes. Park in time to watch oh, yes. the finishers come across. Yep. Now, uh, we, we encourage uh, visitors to uh, take a look at it. Now, uh, I don't know how familiar you are, but there is a road that swings around the east side of uh, Charlottesville called Rio Road. And uh, about a mile down Rio Road, there is a stoplight for a corner called Northfield. Now, Northfield goes right straight east to the river, and about a block and a half from the end of Northfield is where this Norfolk Southern Railroad trestle is, and right below it is one of the most challenging of the rapids, as Dave had mentioned, because in low water, you have to do some pretty fancy maneuvering, but in high water, you can shoot right through it with a, a pretty good... Uh, uh, clip. I know that rapid well, and it's usually but, the highlight of the race oh, for yeah. everyone. Oh uh, yeah. Well, there's another one downstream too that's uh, uh, pretty challenging too. But anyway, as far as where to go to see, uh, you can be up at the 29 North Put in there at the bridge over the South Fork, or you can be at the uh, the uh, Norfolk Southern Trestle there at the east end of Northfield uh, Drive, or go down to Dardentau Park and uh, watch them come in because there's a couple of minor rapids just upstream of the finish line, which some people often uh, uh, overlook. So it would be an uh, interesting observation each place. Now at Darden Tau, we're also going to have some static displays. The uh, Lewis and Clark people are going to display one of their um, boats that uh, is similar to the ones used on the uh, um, Missouri River back in uh, 1803, uh, 4, 5, 6, whenever it was. And uh, they are promoting the uh, Lewis and Clark um, area there at Dardentau Park. We also will have a display by the Chesapeake Bay Federation and also by the Ravenna Conservation uh, Society. So we're trying to promote both conservation and recreational use of the river. So again, that's, that's why uh, we organized this was we wanted to call public attention to this beautiful river that goes around the town that few people notice. And also, the paddling sport is as much fun, in my opinion, now Dave, you might uh, overlook it, uh, as bicycling. You know? Oh, well, I would say they're uh, equally as exciting. Yeah, yeah, they are. <laughs> I and, 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 deeply and, in both. Again, with bicycling, you know, where you've got a nice paved road or a rock path. But when you're uh, paddling, uh, one week difference in rainfall makes one whale of a difference, you know, uh, on how you paddle. They're, they're both fun and, uh, you know, I participate in both and there's nothing like just being alone with your thoughts and, and covering some of nature's beauty under your own power and well, uh, stopping. Let, let, and let me jump on that. There is a lot of flat water in between these rapids and uh, my wife and son have uh, done that run a few times and uh, there's deer coming right down to the edge of the water, you know, or there's beaver in the water. There's a couple of uh, bald eagles that have nests along the way, and there's always plenty of blue heron. So if you paddle quietly, you can find all kinds of stuff to watch. Absolutely, absolutely. So are people able to just paddle the river that day without entering the race? I, I think the best advice would be wait until afternoon to uh, uh, on uh, the race day, the 10th, to paddle down the river. But now, if you want to paddle down at your own pace, come in a week ahead of time on that uh, May 2, 3, and 4, and uh, uh, paddle down the river and get acquainted with it. But on race day, we prefer to have the slow racers wait until afternoon to uh, jump in the river okay. and uh, paddle down. That makes sense, that makes sense. Now we're, we're going to have a, another uh, publicity thing with the uh, uh, Dogwood Parade. We have a float, we've uh, had a parade float for the last four or five years. Uh, we want you to come down and watch the parade. We have a, a couple of last year's winners are going to be riding uh, uh, with their uh, boats on a uh, trailer, and uh, we want you to come down and uh, help us promote the uh, the race. All right, very good. And then the Dogwood Parade, what's the date on that? That day? is April 26, and the parade moves out at uh, 10 o'clock, and right now I do not know whether we'll be in the first position or later. Uh, We'll, we'll know where we are later in the parade. But that parade goes from about 10 until noon. Okay, okay, yeah, that's a big uh, annual event around here. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, for some reason, people in Charlottesville like to celebrate the dogwoods. Yep, yep. So where can people go to learn more about the uh, the races? 
Well, uh, Dave, uh, you've set up a nice blog site. Uh, you want to read that off? Uh, the uh... Yeah, it's uh, rivanaregatta.blogspot.com, or alternately, if you go to Seaville Paddlers, and that's uh, C is in Charlie, V I L L E, paddlers, all one word, dot com, there's a link to the blog site from there that has all the information. What else do people need to know, Merrill? Well, they uh, need to know it is a fun afternoon, and uh, even if it is slightly raining, we're, uh, we'll still run the race. Now, if there's a lot of thunderstorm and lightning in the area, why we may uh, call it. I know about two years ago, the, they were predicting a lot of thunderstorms, and so a lot of uh, paddlers uh, didn't do it, but uh, the storm didn't delay us, but uh, it made a lot of people, you know. But we, we'll watch the weather, and if there's bad thunderstorms and uh, lightning, why we uh, might uh, postpone or uh, uh, call the race. But uh, we haven't yet in nine years. So uh, uh, we want you to come in and uh, observe. If you don't want to observe, why come in later and get in, in your own boat and enjoy the river. Okay, Merrill. Well, it sounds great. I'm looking forward to it again this year. Um, we'll see you, what, April? I believe that's the 26th of Dogwood Parade. And then, parade. then and the races will be on May 10th. And maybe we'll see some people turn up the weekend before on May 3rd to do some practice runs and get familiar with the river. Anything else you'd like to share? Well, we hope everybody will tell their friends, and if you ever thought about getting into the paddling uh, skill, why uh, this would be a good chance to observe, because we're going to have some uh, uh, canoe and uh, uh, kayak uh, salespeople available, and they might have some uh, rigs that you could look at. So uh, we hope you'll come and uh, enjoy. Okay, Merrill, thank you very much for swinging by today, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.